Welcome, welcome everybody from my side to today's talk on how to talk to a PM PO. My name is uh, Stefan Strack. I work for Hodel Search Search at Trivago, and my main duties have something to do with figuring out, out the ideal hotels and then picking the best rate to them, and then make sure we can supply that to the front end. In my job, I'm a technical project manager, so I'm usually running around in the back end and trying to fix things and make processes work there. I generated this talk because I think there's an improvement option in communicating with PMs. Before I give you my reasoning, I want to have a quick check in the room. Who here has to talk to PMs or POs in his daily life? Okay, right, audience, who thinks communicating with a PM, PO can be sometimes difficult? Okay, yeah, that's also what I feel. Who here is PO or PM? Okay, have you sometimes the feeling that you are not well understood? Yeah, okay, exactly, okay, good. So that's also more or less the reasoning that brought me to this talk. So. In the history of project management, I believe we moved a lot forward now. We have come up with good ideas. We improved the way how we work with software engineering teams all together. We make sure that we get a high output there. You can also have a look into the internet. So at least for me, with my daily newsletters, I get links to a lot of blog posts, how to become a good tech leader, how to set up a good tech environment, and what else you can do to lead your engineering teams to success. On top of it, the internet is full of advice on how to talk to an engineer, right? You can read blogs, watch presentation, what YouTube videos, everything is out there that helps us to approach the engineers. However, I believe a fundamental piece in that communication is missing. Because I believe if you just fix one side of it, sure, you can improve the potential. But if you don't fix the other side of that communication and make it understood, there's still potential left in your communication to unfold. So I sat down and reasoned, how can I actually improve the communication towards a PO? So what is really that would help here? And I believe the key thing here is understanding on how a PM or a PO structures his work or reasons about the world when he has to fulfill his work. So what I want to show you today is a little model on how we generally think, and by that deriving in the end what piece of information you need to communicate to us so that the communication is easier and also the PM feels well understood. That would be great. So as with all usual models, we basically need to start and pick the pieces our models should consist of. So first of all, our model will consist out of a vision. That should consider all that defines the context, explains the goals, and also explains what drives us and what is the reasoning behind the actions that we're going to take or why we want to move in a certain direction. Next, there might be specific outcomes as a result of our software engineering process, and they are capable of delivering value in production. As an example, I could add a gallery image to my UX. Further, we have restrictions in place that basically reduces the set of possible outcomes by defining conditions that are not allowed to be met, or vice versa, they basically on the other side only describe the solutions that are available to us. Further down, there are solutions. This is, or this should consider all the things we need to accomplish to get to our outcome. It means solving problems, write code, and get that shipped to production. And last but not least, we're going to discuss about problems. And by problems, I mean circumstances that prevents us from getting to our goals by direct means. So then usually out of our journey as a TMPO, we usually start discussing first with somebody that gives us a request. Somebody approaches us and says, hey, I want something from you. And here's how we have a worldview on that. You see there's an axis about time and value. And we know you as a request giver are potentially here. And then you basically say, 
it would be great if I could be there, have something generated down the timeline that will generate value for me. I was like, okay, great, that's good to know. What I want to know a little bit more about it, I want to know your vision. So what is the stuff that you really want to achieve? So what do you want to do with that solution? What really drives you here? And why is that stuff meaningful? I believe that's very important for us to know because we have to go later down to the teams of subject matter experts and we want to have a buy-in from them supporting the construction of our solution to really move forward. On the other hand, the subject matter experts also want to work on purposeful, purposeful things and want to have meaning in their work and not just eat bananas. Next, in your vision, as you will quickly realize, there are also possible outcomes that you didn't even imagine now. But that's also why it's important for us to determine this kind of vision so that we know, okay, what else would be a possible outcome that you would also desire. Last but not least, I need to know from you your unit of success. I want to know what you will measure in terms of potentially CTP. Is it revenue? Is it visit to book? What is it that really nails down the success of your undertaking? We will need that later to basically judge our outcomes that we come up with the subject matter experts. So by now, we should have a nice and happy communication. I know what you want to do. I know why you want to do it. I see the reasoning behind it. And now I still need some information from you. Here's your vision, some possible outcomes that we discussed. And the next thing I really want to know are the restrictions. There's the first line of restriction, which is the minimal valuable outcome. That's the stuff that we at least need to build and ship in order to satisfy your requirements and your ideas. The next thing I want to know is, okay, when it is too much. So what really is of no use for you? What would be over-engineering? Or what would be too much of a change that you cannot really learn because it's too much moving pieces? Last but not least, and the most obvious restriction, and that might potentially reduce the outcome set that is available, might be the good old time restriction, setting us a deadline that you want to have at least something running at that point in time. So overall, you should be very specific when you talk to us here because the vision and the restrictions are key for the further success of our requirements engineering operations. So now we should have collected everything we basically need to talk to our subject matter experts. So how that usually looks is, I'm going to call out for a meeting, figuring out who we actually need in terms of subject matter experts, invite them all to a room, and then I say, it's like, okay, guys, we are here now. There is that nice vision with the set of restriction, and here's why we should do it. Can you now please tell me how? And then the fun starts. So... Usually not even 30 seconds in the meeting after I ask the question, okay, what are our options to get there? One of the eager engineers pops up and says, yes, I have a solution. We can start going down that way. And before he even finishes his statement, a first hand goes up and says, yes, we can do that. But then there is a problem. Great. Let's discuss about that. So... Then we discuss a little bit of the pro about that problem, and then suddenly somebody else says, yeah, but there are more problems, and as we discuss further, some problems appear over here, and also some wild problems appear over there. And then half an hour into the meeting, you feel like you have uncovered the whole problem space of planet Earth. Okay, how should that actually work? I agree that we should discuss about problems, and please get me right, it is good that the subject matter experts are also the best problem spotters we have on Earth that prevents us from taking flawful applications into productions and help us start discussion about potential solutions by focusing on things we need to solve. What I'm more interested in is the multiple types of problems. There might be a type of problem that we can solve on our own, which is roughly a simple engineering problem. We just get through it and fix this on our own. For example, load the image data into a production system. Fine. 
then there might be problems that we can't solve on our own, and they are very rigid in our way, so the potential solution might be just get around it. Maybe there are some ways to bypass the problem. Then there are problems that really exist, but potentially we can just ignore it, we just don't bother. So maybe the problem is not getting the data into production is we want to put it over streams, and then the problem would be okay, the data will be just eventually consistent. But yeah, maybe that's fine, maybe that doesn't cause harm and we just can't plow with our, so our solution over it. And last but not least, there might be problems appearing that actually are not a problem, and the simple reason is why there's no solution path getting to them. So yeah, there might exist real technical problems out there, but as long as they're not on our solution path, we believe it's not worth dis discussing them. So, the usual meeting now unfolds in the following way. We start discussing about the solution, a problem appears, and then a multitude of problems appear. And we start putting up potential path to solution, we discover the next problems, and we discuss further, and we somewhat come up with our solutions into the desired space. And then we potentially can identify two possible outcomes that we wanna have. To make it a little bit simpler again now, the overview would look like this. There are different solutions that lead to the same outcome, or I might end up with a completely different solution and a different outcome. But now, now here comes the point, I need to decide. In our example, it should be straightforward, right? There's the upper solution that generates more value in less time, and luckily, we hopefully discussed with our request giver appropriately, we know his unit of success, so we can now determine, okay, this one is worth it doing it, and it's also faster delivered than the other one, so then decision is pretty clear, we take that one. So, given all the stuff that I show you, now you know how our worldview on problem solving basically works and how we come up with defined outcomes and how we want to do it. So just now get through it and see how you should communicate with us on the important topics. So the vision, the why is important. It helps us to transmotivation motivation down to the subject matter experts and we also need it to supply meaningful work with purpose. And further, we needed to have a little bit of room to generate solutions that we want to pick. On the outcomes, we need to know the effort or the time spent here in order to determine it, where it goes, and we need your best guess, the subject matter experts, on how high the expected value would be that we can bring, right? There is potentially no upfront knowledge. We basically have to experiment, so the best guess needs to be there in order to judge on our solutions. On the restrictions, we want to know them early and we want to know them all. That's like the key point. And we basically need to know what's your lower bound, what's your upper bound, and what's your time restriction so we can come up with a proper set of solutions that actually fulfill your wishes. On the solutions, we are interested in all of them, and especially them that, fixing, that are fixing the problems that lie in front of us, step by step, little by little, as long as they carry us over to a desired outcome. And about the problems, yes, as I said, we need them, I agree to them, but more important for us is, okay, what type of problem is it? Do we have to fix it? Can we fix it? Need, do we need to bypass it? Can we ignore it, or is it not a problem? and then please be so kind and supply a way how to solve that problem. Thank you.